unattended, your value as an operator or a programmer goes that much higher up. Hello, we're at Fuji America today, not in Japan, but here in the US. A gantry loading system zipping through its processes. We know the speeds of a gantry load. We know the importance of automation, but this isn't about me. My camera person can point right over here to my friend Eric. We're talking Fuji America, Eric. We're talking gantry loading. We're talking speed. We got a couple of great technologies today to go over. Would you mind describing a little bit about this machine and what the audience might be looking at? All right. Well, the CSD 302, that's our front loaded dual spindle machine. It's loading it with a dual spindle gantry. And then also we have a two place flip over station on the inside of the machine. We're able to run from a front loader, two op, uh, op 10 and op 20, able to flip it in process, loading from a work stocker here, and then offloading into a work stocker on that side. So in an unintended environment, you just run in the first spin on the op 20 and then come back to finish parts over here. You know, I'm looking at this, Eric, and, and we're grateful enough or honored enough to do a lot of interviews, right? So we get to discuss technology all the time. Right. And I'm looking at this and I'm going, wow, okay, how many times have I seen a machine do OP10, then you got to manually flip the part over and do OP20, or maybe we have OP10 and OP20 inside the one machine, mm -hmm. but we don't have the gantry loading and unloading to add the automation. I mean, to me, what I'm trying to get to, coming full circle to what you were just describing, right. is that we are now doing something that needs to be done in an automated fashion faster. And Correct. I like that a lot. Right. And also we're adding more versatility because everything's built into the machine. Um, there's no integration involved. We don't have to have outside entities come in and change things. Everything's included. So if we need to run four parts of one piece and then a hundred parts of another piece, it's all right in on the control and can be really easily managed from that point. I like that. I like the word versatility. I like that you said that. Flexibility pops up for me as well because you mentioned, in considering the numbers, a high mix, low volume, and a low volume, high mix. Two Absolutely. different options that you can do in this setup. And something you started with that I like a lot as well, Eric, is the communication. Sometimes we'll bring in partners, and a lot of the partners are great. Let's be honest, folks, there's a lot of great partners out there. But occasionally you'll walk into a shop and go, what, the two aren't communicating? Don't worry, I have a solution. Everything communicates together, right? right? Correct. Yeah, and that's, it really, the most important part is to alleviate downtime. So from setup to operation, un, uh, unattended machining. And then also, God forbid, there's, you know, problems. It's easy to get it fixed. And that's, you know, avoid downtime, up chip time, and unattended time. Yeah, so we're gonna walk this general direction, look All at the right. other technology, but as we do that, Eric, the first thing that popped into my head when you said, uh, we're gonna help you with the problems, am I, I think I'm old school, Vanilla Ice popped up and said, if there's a problem, yo, I'll solve it, check out, oh right, gosh, right, right. sorry guys, I had to do it. But we don't want problems, and you mentioned being able to do more, you mentioned the, the versatility, the flexibility, we didn't actually say one of the buzzwords that's out there right now, but we all talk about it. Maybe more, I, I don't know if it's more than we should, but we talk about it and that's the labor shortage. And if we can walk oh, away from absolutely. a machine and allow these machines to do some work, then we're kind of doing what we can. Of course, we're creating more education and awareness and even making manufacturing fun, or at least we're trying right, to, right, right. but these machines help with that as well, don't they? Yeah, it gives um, an opportunity to, you know, for a long time, people weren't coming into the trade because you know, they didn't want to learn how to, you know, run a manual mill or a drill press or sharpen a drill or, you know, do all the crappy stuff that comes with it. They want to come in and start pressing buttons, you know, the video game age. Uh -huh. They just, you know, a half million dollar piece of equipment and they just want to start pushing buttons. And, you know, we try and get them excited. We try and start them at the beginning. We walk them through. But to be able to, you know, run multiple parts and run multiple programs, unattended, your value as an operator or a programmer goes that much higher up. Yeah, you're right. You know, same thing for the shop owner. You know, it's, he's gonna sell that same thing to get his product produced. Yeah, you're exactly right. Yeah. And, and 
I'm going to segue you into this machine in just a minute, but I want to bring up some valuable points you just said. I'd like to talk to the audience a little bit about that is, you're right, everyone wants to jump onto a machine in a half million dollar, a million dollar machine. Oftentimes, that's how machines break. Because I come from, and somebody for sure is going to call me out and be like, I was back with the tape, and you're right. on the floppy disk, but I started around floppy disk, right? So I was in that age of feeling the vibration of the manual machines, the hum, sure. the purr, the chips that would come off of it, and we've kind of lost a bit of that. Everyone yep. wants to get into CAD and designing and work with the robots. So I'm just going to bring that full circle as we get back into the machining right, right. world. So what's this machine up to? All right, so this machine is also automated and starting from a work loading station. But this is an, an opposing horizontal spindle machine. Oh, nice. So we have a left side, we have a right side, and then we have an, the robot, you know, the arm comes from left to right crossing over the middle section. It's a double gripper robot. So it's able to take the first stop 10 finished, take the finished complete part from op 20, put the op 10 in it, and then it brings the finished part to the workstation, grabs a new part, and it's ready to load into op 10. And again, that unattended continual machine. In the assumption, and we're both wise, we we kind of know what assuming can do. Sure. I won't go into the details <laughs> right, of how right, that right. word spins out, but assuming that a job is op 10 and op 20, we're looking at a done in one type part. We're looking at really just trying to take it from a raw material, machine one side, machine the next side, and then finish it off. Sure. I would imagine, maybe I'm assuming again, there's probably some form of a measurement system you could add to this if you wanted to, yeah. to even take a look at that. Is that correct? Right, and it also has the capability to stop within production allowing you to take a part out, inspect it through inspection, ah. get through a first article. Yep, this part's great, continue, and then hit start. So to me, and this is why I bring the experts, so correct me if I'm wrong, right. and I do say that a lot, because I love being wrong and I love learning, but correct me if I'm wrong, from the machine we looked at over here to the machine we're looking at now, it really feels like it's about speed and flexibility and doing sure. more within one unit, and we're just kind of taking one of the axes and flipping it, and then just kind of doing something similar, sure. right? absolutely. Um, and over here, the difference is going to be you, you have a center to chuck environment on the left and the right side. So it could be um, where you, you run the part, it's going to be a low diameter and a longer length. Where in that application over on the gantry, it's a more shallow part with a larger ah, diameter. Ah, clever. So in, in every aspect from chip management to tool management, inspection, uh, maintenance, Again, the chip management is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have anything interfering with that application. I'm gonna ask you one more question if it's all right, Eric, and it's, I, I kinda wanna just take a, a quick glance at this software mm -hmm. here, and it's only because it seems so user-friendly. When I look at my iPhone, and we look at a smartphone in general, this seems to almost, not mimic it, but it's very mm -hmm. colorful, and the screen seems friendly. Sure. It seems like a user would want to be a part of it instead of shying away from it, going, mm, that looks like a whole bunch of numbers, right, a bunch right. of zeros and ones over there, I mean, binary coding. Okay, well, on, on this system here, you'll see we have two interfaces. One is the Fuji interface, and this is going to help you set up the left and the right spindle to spindle, mm -hmm. what program it's going to run, speeds and feeds, different live tools. Over here, then you go to the robot, and that's going to give you your start point, your teach points, and where the robot is going to move and change parts. And then on peripheral devices, if you're going to add inspection, if you're going to add you know, pre-inspection or something along that line, that would be done there. Now here is what most, most operators are used to seeing this. It's a FANUC interface on the front end of the controller. Sure. So we've covered the machines, we've covered the technology, much like being able to teach here, you've taught me a lot as well. Are there any final messages you'd like to offer the audience about Fuji America, service support wise, how they can find you and learn more about the technology? Oh, well, we do have a fantastic website at fujimachine.com. Uh, it has a virtual tour that goes through control, each machine, different applications. Um, we work through distribution network through each region of the country. Uh, I work particularly with Selway Machine Tool throughout the whole West. Um, service, applications, our distributors are trained, and we also you know, bring guys out from the Midwest, depending on what state. Really just come step up to automation. There you go, step yeah. up to automation. Great closing statement. Also a nice little shout out to our friends at Selway, Zach, Preston, you guys over there. We do enjoy you. Mm -hmm. Eric. 
appreciate you so much, my Thank friend. You, sir. I always love learning about new technology, and uh, I have spent time at the Fuji Mountain in Japan. Have you? Uh, no, not I have Fuji? not. Not yet. The trip is coming. We put it onto a All documented right. platform. Now we got to go. All right. <laughs>